There is a quote from Buddha that says, when you like a flower, you will pluck it. But when you love a flower, you will water it daily. And I think that this is such a beautiful analogy to truly, genuinely loving someone. In the Western world, we've confused love with attachment. I talk about this in a recent Instagram post. Um, if you haven't already followed me there because I share a lot more thoughts and my captions tend to be full of different insights. And so I talked about in the post how people think attachment is possession. Using this word my, my house, my car, my husband, my family, but you don't realize that none of those things or people belong to you. They're truly loaned to you. And you have no idea how long you will be gifted with that person, with that thing, with that experience. And so to truly love something is to admire it independently of you. Even if it is not mine, even if it has nothing to do with you, even if you are not in the picture, you would still love that thing and wish it well and notice it in all of its glory. So I think that to truly love something or someone, sometimes you need to let that thing or that person go in order to truly love it, in order to truly water it daily, like Buddha says. Because let's be real. Sometimes we are going to date someone and it is evident that we don't bring out the best in that person. Sometimes we are going to meet someone and we realize that they need to go through more healing or more inner work to truly connect with us in a healthy way. Sometimes we fall in love with someone and we realize that everything is perfect, but the timing is off. We simply cannot give to them what they deserve from us at this moment. And so truly loving someone should not come with a whole list of requirements we can simply love someone from afar, from a distance. And I do this, I have done this, I'm still doing this today. There are people in my life that I truly love, that I wish the best for, that I pray for, that I, I hope that everything in their life is working out to their benefit, to, to the best that it could ever be. However, I might not have contact with these people. I might not be in touch with these people. And it's because I realized that in order to truly love them, I need to let go. I need to separate myself from them. I need to allow them to grow wings and to live life on their own independently of me. And the reason I was called to film this video is I think many people stay in relationships or stay around people even though they know that is not best for the person. And I don't know why, but right now this thought just came to mind, so I need to share it. I remember it must have been middle school when I had a teacher and it was a science teacher. Oh, what was her name? Mrs. with an M. Mrs. Oh, I forget, but I still remember the way she looked. She had short, red, spunky hair. She was like really funky. She was a little bit punk rock. And she told us, I have a special guest who's coming, let's say this, this Friday, and he's going to speak to you guys. And I think it must have been like Mental Health Awareness Month or some sort of month that highlighted addiction or mental health or something like that. And so this gentleman came to our class and mind you, my teacher up until this point, she was a typical teacher, right? She told us the basics about her life, but she never got into much depth, right? 
it's pretty typical. Usually the first day of class, they might show you a few pictures. This is my husband. This is our house. I grew up here. Um, she, it was along those lines, right? We didn't know much about her. But this gentleman ended up coming to our class and telling us this story of resilience, of strength, of overcoming addiction. And he told us that he had struggled for so many years to overcome this addiction. And he got let go from jobs. He got let go from so many different opportunities. He got kicked out of school. He was just hanging out with the worst crowd. He was borrowing money for, from people to purchase drugs. And the story just goes on and on. He had a horrible addiction. I'm not sure exactly to what, um, but anyways, he had told the story how his family tried everything they had sent him to rehab. They had, you know, tried giving him money and caving in and trying to help him and just, you know, appeasing his desires. They tried everything, you know, they, they had literally just checked off every single box and what they could do. And one day after like, I don't know, a few day binge, he came home and realized that the door was locked. And he said, I could see my mom through the window. I'm getting emotional. But the door was locked. She had locked me out. And he realized in that moment that he was on his own. His parents were no longer going to feed this addiction. They, they didn't know what else to do. So this was like the last straw that they were willing to try. And he said he was so down and out. He was homeless at this point. And it wasn't until he hit that moment of rock bottom that he got his shit together, that he got his act together, that he was able to overcome this addiction. So the twist at the end of the story was he turned to our teacher and he said, and that is my mom. And I'm so happy that she made that decision to detach from me with love because that is what he needed to, to really get his stuff together, to really figure it out because he was finally down on his back. He had no other options and it was like do or die right? He had to survive at this point. It wasn't a matter of, oh, I'm just going to, you know, have fun for another weekend and figure it out next week. Now he was on the street. And so this story was like so profound. I'll never forget it. And I didn't even plan on sharing this, but for some reason that, that story just came to mind. So I hope that it resonated or helped any one of you to know that it is completely okay to detach. Sometimes it's actually what's best. I think a lot of us will rather do anything than detach. I've seen this in myself. I've seen this with friends. When they're in the most toxic relationship, even an abusive one, and they will do anything except leave this person alone, right? They will give him the last dollar. They will give him the benefit of the doubt. They will forgive cheating. They will, you know, ostracize themselves from their entire family. They will do anything just to simply not have to detach because detachment can sometimes be the hardest thing. As humans, we are so wired to attach onto things, unfortunately, right? We attach onto people, to things, to objects, to our idea of the way our life should be. We attach ourselves to people, to places, to things, to our mind, to our thoughts. We attach ourselves to our body, to the way that we look, to the way that we appear, to the things that people say, but we don't realize that we don't own any of that. None of that is literally even real. It's all an illusion. All of it is fleeting. None of it is permanent. The only thing that is, is your spirit, is your soul, is that thing within that you can't see, you can't feel. It just simply is. It's what's beneath all of that. 
So when we detach, we think we're losing something. We're losing that physical thing. We're losing the feeling of that person next to us. We're losing the relationship, the identity, the label that we are intertwined with this person. We think we're losing so much, but we don't realize we are gaining. Sometimes we're gaining that person back. Like in the case of my teacher, she gained her son back. Had she not detached, she might have lost him forever. He could have overdosed. And I'm not saying that it was simply her decision to kick him out that made the difference. We never know. But a lot of people need that detachment to truly grow, to truly heal, to truly do the inner work, to truly find the people who relate to them, who resonate with them, who align with them, who bring out the best in them. I have had to look at myself in the mirror at times and been like, having this person in your life is not only detrimental to you, but to them. And so detaching will benefit both of you as much as it hurts right now, as much as it's hard to accept and to understand. And I have done this throughout my life. I've detached from friends. I've detached from boyfriends at the time. I have detached from family members who I knew were not in the right mind to give me what I needed and vice versa. Healing had to take place and healing needed to be done independent from one another. It had to be done in isolation. It had to be done without us in each other's lives. And sometimes after detaching, after separating, there can be a reconciliation. However, that should not be the purpose and that is not always the result. Sometimes it just is what it is and that person will not be in your life physically anymore. But having that peace of mind to know that I love them, I send them love, I send them healing, I pray for them is better than you actually trying to attach again. The opposite of love, some people think, is hate, right? It's like someone will love you and then the next month they, they hate you because they can't be with you or because whatever happened and you guys are no longer on good terms. And you really need to be an evolved person, a mature person, someone with someone who truly understands human psychology to understand that the opposite of love does not need to be hate. It can be love sent from afar. It can be loving from afar. It can be loving from a distance. It can be detaching to attach. I want to know what you guys think about this. I want to know if you guys have ever had to detach from someone or to love them from afar. And I also want to know, did that end in a reconciliation or did it simply just help you come to terms and make peace with the situation because I think both things can happen, both outcomes are possible and both are right because either of those are better than attaching to something and knowing that it is harming you, it is harming them and it's harming the harmony of the world, right? So I hope that this resonated. I hope that this helped you. Make sure to subscribe before you head out and I will see you all very soon. Bye.